This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 1540. Seven Strategies One Woman Used to Save $100,000 in Three and a Half Years by Bola Shikumbi with TheBudgetMom.com. And I'm your host and personal finance enthusiast, Diana Merriam. This is the show where I read to you from some of the best personal finance blogs on the planet, sometimes a little too enthusiastically. For now, let's get to today's post as we optimize your life. Seven Strategies One Woman Used to Save $100,000 in Three and a Half Years by Bola Shikumbi with TheBudgetMom.com. I've shared the general details of my story on how I saved $100,000 in three and a half years without making a six-figure salary here on the blog before. But in this post, I wanted to delve into the seven key strategies that helped me get to $100,000 in three and a half years and how you can apply to your own personal savings or debt strategies too. Here it goes. Number one, have the right mindset. Having the right money mindset is really critical and determines how successful you are with your money. You have to decide that you're ready to start saving or to start paying off your debt, and you also have to decide that regardless of what's going on or what people are telling you, you can do it. When I was in the early stages of saving money, I never thought to myself I couldn't do it. Instead, I thought to myself, why not me? I stayed positive and challenged myself to attain the six-figure mark with my savings. I wanted it bad enough and made saving money one of my major priorities. I told myself I could do it, no matter what. Sometimes the biggest hurdles are in our minds, and once we get past them, everything else becomes a little easier and we find ways to get things done. Number two, have a specific goal. When it comes to saving money, you want your goals to be crystal clear and really specific. This means knowing exactly how much you wanna save or how much debt you wanna pay off by when and then creating an actionable plan around it that you can break down by quarter, by month, and by week so you can figure out what exactly you need to do to reach your goals. One of my mistakes when I was saving was that I knew I wanted to get to six figures but I wasn't super specific with my goals. So once I hit 100 grand at three and a half years and I got to about 124 grand at four years, I started to get comfortable. If I had given myself a specific goal like 150,000 or 175,000 or even 200,000, I think I could have saved more money in the same amount of time. Number three, surround yourself with the right influences. Surrounding yourself with the right influences is really important because these are the people and the things that will carry you to being successful and keep you motivated. One of the things I did each morning and still do was check in with my favorite personal finance blog and websites. They kept me motivated and inspired me to keep going. I also spent more time with friends who wanted to talk about finances and business and read a lot of personal finance and business books. Once you start to shift your circle of influence and surround yourself with the right influences that align with your money goals, you'll find that you're more focused on achieving those goals. Strategy number four, contribute to retirement. Saving for retirement should be a part of everyone's long-term wealth building strategy. And if your employer offers a retirement savings plan, you should be participating in it. If you are self-employed, you can set up your own retirement savings in an IRA through a reputable brokerage firm. My 401k was where I saved $40,000 plus of my 100k in those three and a half years. And while I took advantage of my employer match, I didn't max out my contributions because I didn't fully understand the benefits of the 401k until much later. If I could do it over, I would take advantage of it and max out to the full contribution limit allowed by the government each year which would have allowed me to save even more money. Strategy number five, keep your expenses low. Keeping the gap between how much you earn and how much you spend as wide as possible will allow you to have extra money to save or extra money to put toward your debt. The larger the gap, the better. I focused on keeping my expenses as low as possible during that time by living close to work, keeping my grocery bill and general miscellaneous spending as low as possible, keeping my outings minimal, etc. Strategy number six, be smart with credit. I avoided credit cards and all my spending on credit was done on a charge card which required me to pay my balance in full every month. You cannot build wealth by racking up debt. And so my recommendation would be to avoid using credit at all costs if you're trying to save or pay down debt. 
If you're paying down debt, set up an emergency fund of at least $1,000 and get aggressive with paying down your debt. Strategy number seven, start with a side hustle or get a part-time job. One of the things that helped me get over the six-figure mark was to start my own business as a wedding photographer. The reason why I was able to save more by starting my own business was because I managed my business finances well. Alternatively, you can get a part-time job to earn additional income. Whichever path you decide to take to accelerate your savings or debt repayment strategy, be it starting a business or getting a part-time job, understand that it will require dedication and financial savviness as you'll be working a lot and you'll need to be a good steward of your business finances as well. But it is worth it at the end of the day. These seven strategies are what helped me save $100,000 in three and a half years and for the most part can be applied to your savings or debt repayment plans. You too can save a good amount of money or pay off a ton of debt by creating a solid money plan for yourself and sticking to that plan with the right mindset and habits. You just listened to the post titled Seven Strategies One Woman Used to Save $100,000 in Three and a Half Years by Bola Shikumbi with TheBudgetMom.com. Thank you to Gusto. I've shared some of what small business owners have said about them before, but there's actually a lot more. Here are some real people. Tom S. says, Gusto has allowed my small company to offer big time benefits without an HR department. And that's been true for us too, actually. Here on the OLD podcast team, we feel like we have a full-time payroll and HR department that can offer benefits thanks to Gusto. Laura L. says, with Gusto, even my employees are impressed with how easy their new hire paperwork is. Also true for us here. When we switched over to Gusto, I had to do the new hire paperwork. And yes, it was a breeze, super fast, easy, and I didn't need any additional instructions or help. And here's what Brian L. says. Gusto is super simple and easy to use. I've used multiple other payroll processes and there's nothing like this out there. And the list goes on. Right now, our listeners get three months free when they go to gusto.com slash OFD. Yep, three months of payroll, benefits admin, and more. Totally free. Again, that's gusto.com slash OFD, G-U-S-T-O dot com slash OFD. I'm really glad that Bola started with mindset. It's so easy to just say, spend less money than you earn and save the difference. But in order to actually do that, you're gonna need to change your behavior. And you're more likely to change your behavior if you expand your understanding of what's possible with your finances. While reading this article, I was reminded of a quote from a book called Grit by Angela Duckworth. She says, quote, we all face limits, not just in talent, but in opportunity. But more often than we think, our limits are self-imposed, end quote. I also appreciated the call out here on being mindful of the people influencing you. If I've learned anything from the 75 hard challenge I'm doing right now, it's that when I wanna do a hard thing, I need to call in reinforcements. A group of five of us are doing this challenge and we check in with each other every day. I really think if I didn't have them, I probably would have quit by now. There are dozens of personal finance groups online that you can utilize for support. And even if you don't interact per se, just reading the posts and comments can help you stay focused on your goals. Keeping expenses low comes with the benefit of reaching financial goals faster. But for me, it also brings a sense of comfort to know that I can meet my needs with very little money. There's something very freeing about that because you have less financial pressure. It can be similar to embracing the concept of minimalism. When you have less stuff and more simplicity in your life, you open up more mental space. Having minimal expenses has opened up mental space for me to think about money less and to think more about how I wanna spend my time, who I wanna spend it with, and what I wanna create. And that will do it for today. Have a great day and start to your weekend if you're listening in real time. And I'll be back here over the weekend where your optimal life awaits.